today's intentions are to learn what a gremlin is and what activates it, to explore how we can spot a gremlin, um, to review common gremlin archetypes maybe, to, to discover the gremlin taming method and to learn how to use it with your clients and then how to tame our own gremlins when we're working with clients. And that brings me to uh, my introduction uh, of Rick. And I, I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful and humbled to have Rick with us today. Uh, Rick's been a psychotherapist, a personal and executive coach, and a consultant to businesses and universities and nonprofits for more than 50 years, almost 50 years. Um, he's conducted workshops and organizations uh, with organizations in US, Europe, and the Middle East. He's the author of four HarperCollins books. His seminal work, Taming Your Gremlins, has been translated into 12 languages and has been a top seller um, for HarperCollins for 35 years. He's a past faculty member at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center Medical School and founder of the Gremlin Taming Institute of Dallas, Texas. And so with that, um, welcome, Rick. Thank you for... Thank you for joining. I've got to unmute you. I'm trying to unmute you now, but for some reason I can't. Hold on. Maybe you need to unmute yourself. Huh. I don't know. Let me, uh, let's see if that didn't. I bet that'll work, right? Okay. I think so. Let me. You hear me? Yes, I do. Okay, that's good. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, you know, what I was saying is I like the way you isolated out the topics that we might cover. I mean, I hadn't seen those before, but I, I think they were right on, Allison. Oh, good. Well, I saw. Yeah. I was. I was telling you in the green room before we started um, how much I appreciated your your invitation for me to bring my curiosity. Absolutely. Because and I didn't, and I don't want to see questions ahead of time. I told you that. So yeah, yeah, because I, it really uh, got me thinking about my own gremlins and right. new ways. And and I and I didn't say this, but I want to give you permission. Like we can go anywhere in this conversation. I can be your client. You can be as exploring. We can go as deep. You've got my full permission to play full out. Um, Wonderful. That's great. Listen, I want to thank you very much for having me. I know how um, sincere you are to provide something that really has meaning for your constituents. So I'm, I'm honored. Thanks for asking me, really. I hope I don't embarrass you. <laughs> well, it's, it, it is prophetic you should say that, Rick, because uh -huh. like embarrassment is my gremlin. Oh, wow. Well, okay. I mean, well, not that I just have one. Um, I actually, in prep for this conversation, I literally discovered a new one. Well, which one you want to tell me about? Let's just start there. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll give you an overview of both. Okay. But I'll do, we'll do it quickly. So not take up too much time. The embarrassment gremlin is old friend of mine. Okay. And I used to, I told someone just this week that, that embarrassment is like my kryptonite. And that I'm easily embarrassed, mainly not by other people, but by myself. Well, sure. So let's stop right there for a minute. So tell me how you tend to embarrass yourself. You go I'm slowly. Not, well, uh, it's always about my not meeting my expectations for myself. Well, there you go. Expectations are like cockroaches. You don't, you don't want them. You can have a desire, really strong desire can be beautiful, you know. But when that becomes an expectation, you set yourself up for a disappointment. So what you can start playing with, Allison, mm -hmm. is when you notice yourself forming an expectation, you're going to catch yourself in the act of doing this if you practice one of the key elements of the gremlin timing method, which is simply noticing. You're going to notice that. So tell me now, 
if what you were going to do is form an expectation about our work today, mm -hmm. just this hour, mm -hmm. what's your, tell me what your desire is first. You know, my, my, well, I appreciate it because the way you framed it up has me access my heart. That's right. And Would that's what like gremlin timing is all about, by the way. Let's do this. I mean, in the interest of time and other people wanting to work, perhaps, I want you to just make a statement beginning with the words, I really want, and relate it to this event. I really want. I really want people to walk away from this, this hour feeling like they've got a, a tool, a skill, an awareness that will change their lives and the lives of their clients. I'm, and I know that you want that for everybody here, but I want you to pick somebody, somebody who you know by name. Okay. You got them? Char I'm going to pick Charlene. Okay. So I want you to call her by name and repeat what you just said. You may use slightly different words or whatever, but put some air, put some space between the words. I want you to feel every word, including Darlene. Uh -huh. Okay, and come okay. from as deep a place. When I say deep, I mean within your body as you can. Let it resonate. Yeah. So, Charlene, I would love for you to walk away from this hour knowing that you've got some safe place to fall, some tool, some help to fall back on when you're feeling maybe your worst. Just say the words, Darlene, I really want that for you and see what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. Charlene. I, yeah, Charlene. Charlene. I really want that for you. One more time. Charlene, I really want that for you. What's the experience in the center of your chest and, and with, your, with your breathing, Allison? What do you notice? I'm feeling very grounded. Uh huh. And my breathing seems easy. Yeah. So, if what you were going to do is make yourself <clears throat> uptight right now, how would you do it? Well, I think about some. I think about some worry of my not achieving that, and my. Well, let, let's do this, and I'll, I'll leave you alone in just a minute. But I'm I good. Want, I want you to teach Dana how to make herself tight, how to really go from feeling good to feeling tight. I, I can do that. I've seen it. I would Thank tell you. Dana some way in which she hasn't met my expectation. <laughs> okay. All right. Huh. So what's your experience at this moment, Allison? Because I want you to go back to that grounded place because I, I didn't do that. You did it. Uh-huh. So how do you get back there? Mm. Breathe, breathe. Mm. Get out of your head. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling my feet on the floor. Right. I'm feeling my seat on the chair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, do just one more thing and I'll leave you alone. Mm -hmm. I want you from real deep inside to hum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let it happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so let's let's just uh, let's let this be at least for our hour or the rest of your life or whatever, let's let this be your home base. Mm. That feeling of, of uncontamination by anything, but just being. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying be here all the time. Mm -hmm. Periodically, somebody writes a book about be here now or whatever, you know, and that's good. But in the Gremlin Taming Method, what we do is we establish the present moment as your home, and you come home several times an hour. So this is just a, a sampling of how to do that, Allison. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because, you know, the way you introduced just the purpose of what you all are doing here with learning in action, you know, the way you introduced that was 
we're really forming a connection to our heart of hearts. That's what gremlin taming is all about. It is not about, it's not about a Tom and Jerry cartoon with a, an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other or a gremlin on the other and kind of resolving that dialogue. It's not. It's about removing yourself from that entire dialogue so that you can tap into that thing that's true on the inside. In other words, if, uh, well, like a, a sculptor sees something within a stone, starts to chip away at to reveal something beautiful. Your gremlin is the stone that ends up on the floor. Gremlin timing is not about the gremlin. It's about revealing that thing inside that is the natural you, the essence of the natural you. You can call it soul, spirit, prana, ray, chi, ki, the primordial vibration, elan, vital, life, but it's in there. And the advantage to tapping into that and feeling it is it feels good. And it will, it'll basically tell you who to hang out with, who and what to get the hell away from. It's a beautiful thing. I'll hush about this in a minute, but I, I get fired up about it because it's made such a difference in my life for the last, I don't know, 45 years or something. It, it, it's a radar. It, it, you serve it in two ways. One is you serve it like you would serve a master. You listen to it. You follow the feeling. And the other, just think of it as true love. You start serving it up to people like you would serve them a big piece of cherry pie. You know? So that's the objective of Gremlin Time. Your tool, your tool for chiseling is uh, what we would call simply noticing which I could get into, but maybe there's somebody else has something they want to focus on. Mm. So what, what's feeling, where, where's your energy want to go, Rick? Mine? Mm. I'd be happy to work with somebody. I'd be happy to say something about simply noticing if you'd rather hear mm. something about that. We're going to cover it at some point because I want you to, it's extremely important to me, and I know Allison knows this, and it's important for her. I really want you to leave here with tools that you can start using immediately in your own life. And those of you that are therapists or coaches, I mean, to start using it with other people or with your family members. But I want you to get something that's very practical, not some philosophy. This is not a philosophy. It's a skill. It's a several, it's a skill set actually. So. so is your sense that to get that particular um, piece across, do you want to, would you like to talk about it or maybe have someone ask or to volunteer themselves and you illustrate it? Well, why don't you let me talk about it for a minute? Okay, let's, let's do that. And then maybe some people will want to jump in or to just ask a question would be fine. You don't have to, to work if you don't want to just ask a question, but simply noticing, well, I'll, I'll say this. So I wrote Gr Taming Your Gremlin in 1983, it was published in 84. And at that time, Buddhism was not big in the West. People were, I mean, they were threatened by yoga and meditation, a lot of people. So, they, and certainly there was no term like mindfulness floating around. And I needed a term to describe the experience I was having. So the term I came up with was simply noticing. Just simply notice. That's it. Not analyze, not think about, not try to be something, just notice. Well, the way the method works is you start with practice not just to notice what's going on around you or in your own body, which those things are very important. But with practice, you can begin to notice your own concepts, your own beliefs about who you are and about how the world works. And as you begin to notice those things, you start to see, even though they may be right on, they may not be. In any event, they're basically opinions that you develop loyalty to. 
So as you begin to notice them, you get a sliver of light between who you are and those opinions. Well, at that point, you're in touch with the observer within. And uh, there's a natural thing that starts to happen called the Zen, I call it the Zen theory of change, which we'll talk about in a minute. If anybody, has anybody got any questions? I don't want to talk the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so let's, so uh, Dana, are there questions in the chat box? Um, Julie asked a question if um, the purpose of the hum is to bring the person to the present. Yes, when I, well, I mean, that's a, 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 one way to say it, absolutely. What happened is, I don't know if you noticed, but when Allison was talking and she said what she had to say to Charlene, and there was a resonance there. When I had her separate out the words and call Charlene by name, it, her voice deepened and there was a resonance that was very evident. And then I had her teach you, Dana, how to not do that. And there was, she, she tightened up a little bit. So I wanted her, in the interest of time, to return to that place quickly. So I had her drop back to a, a hum because I knew that would take her deep inside, uh, or basically her, her, this area. Breathing is key in all this, but it's not, we're not just talking about belly breathing here. There's more to it than that. So does it, I won't be sure that answers uh, the question. Mm -hmm. If not, I'll be glad to do a follow-up or whatever. Yeah. Mm, Julie says yes, that's good. Good. Um, Sonny, I see your hand. Do you want to unmute and ask a question? Yeah, if that's okay. Hi. Um, hi, Rick. How are you? I'm fine, Julie. How are you? This is no, that's Sonny. Yeah. Oh, hey, Sonny. Hi. Wow, nice <laughs> to see you. I know, surprise. Um, <laughs> Allison, thank you so much for having this. I, I was wondering uh, if I could work with a, a you know, a gremlin. I wouldn't refer to it as that necessarily, but there's one that's just real active today, so I didn't know if that was okay to do in the in our It's time. okay to do. Oh, okay, cool. Is and, and that's cool with everybody. Um, okay, good, because it's just really present. So, um, you know, there's so much uncertainty right now everywhere in yep. uh, all over the place, and um, it hasn't been bothering me um until recently and i'm i'm having this tension i'm getting headaches like the last two days i've gotten headaches stop sonny i want you to say to me i've been giving myself headaches i've been giving myself headaches exactly well, how the hell are you doing that teach me yes okay slowly in slow motion sonny okay so i'm giving myself headaches be, be, by trying to to make it like to solve it i'm trying to solve it yeah that's deadly but i know <laughs> Um, you know, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so I'll tell you what, do it out loud, mm -hmm. whatever's going on in your head. In fact, let's do this, mm -hmm. let's just give it a sound. Okay, what's a sound? If I could be in your head and there were a sound to go with it, what would it be like? Okay, it would be like what a tank sounds like when it's like grinding, it'd be like, do it. <laughs> like, like, hold on it's like that do it again for me sonny okay it's like that yeah say and and this is what goes on in my head and that is what goes on all over the fucking place in my head <laughs> i want you to put something at the front end of that until now that's what's gone on all over the fucking place, or however you say it. <laughs> Sorry to make you curse. <laughs> no, but until now. Yeah. Until. Okay, until now, that is what's gone on in my head all over the fucking place. No, yeah. that's what that's what I've done in my head. Yes. I know it may not feel like you're doing it, but we'll get there. I know I am. I know I am. So um, say that again. I know I am doing it. I know I have been. I know I have been. Uh, yes, I know I have been doing that. That's why I have headaches. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do it one more time. So I want you to vividly describe what until now I have been and tell me, fill in the blank. Until now, I have been giving myself headaches. Uh huh. By trying, uh -huh. by trying, <laughs> by trying to solve and predict and plan and fix it. And you, you notice what that feels like. Yeah, it feels crummy. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. So imagine if you could plan, do constructive thinking without mm -hmm. feeling that angst. Mm -hmm. Do you imagine that's possible? It sounds nice and my body relaxed at the idea of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just want to suggest to you that it's completely possible. So like here's, how you, here's how you do it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want you to accentuate that. And I want you not just to accentuate it in your head. I want you to feel what it really, what the physical experience is. And you got to really exaggerate it, Sonny. Okay. Yeah. Because I was like, if I just let it do its thing, it my head's already pounding, and um, and it's now in my body and my arms. You know, it's like a, it's a very oh, uh, it's, it's shitty. It's a shitty. You know, sh show us as best oh, you can sitting there. You can stand like up. Ah, Stay with it. Like just, oh, just, like do on. it, like do it. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Ah. Do that again. <laughs> ah, ah, that's how it feels. Ah, so what's your experience? Ah. There you go. Now just get out of your head and notice your experience in the center of your chest with your breathing. And be straight with me. Tell me what's going on in your body, not in your head. Yeah, well, in my center of my body, it's clear because all the energy is in the limbs and in my head. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I know, it's weird. Yeah, so what's your head feel like now? It's like, has a pressure in the, right here. Mm -hmm. If you were gonna accentuate that pressure, how would you do it? I would, uh, I would go into the thinking, planning, solving. Mm -hmm. And the overwhelm. Yeah, so you would, so it starts with the thinking, planning, all that, yeah. and then you get that feeling of overwhelm. Yeah. So you, you know precisely how to do that, right? How to make yourself miserable. I guess I unconsciously was doing that the last many yeah. days. Oh, oh, you're a professional. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm a master. Yeah. So, you know, a while ago I had Allison teach Dana something. I'm not going to have you teach, but I want you to, between now, I was going to say between now and the next time we get together. I know, I right? <laughs> But I really want you to do this, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. I want you to make a handout mm -hmm. as if you were going to teach somebody. You're going to teach me. Yeah. Make it for Rick. I really want to teach you, Rick, precisely how to make your breathing shallow, your head tight so that it throbs. Because mm -hmm. I don't have a clue. Right. I don't have. It's my first day. What a great idea. Mm -hmm. You're going to teach me. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to practice doing it and undoing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you how to undo it real quickly and then we'll move on. Okay. Okay. Once you accentuate mm -hmm. both, I mean, the, the worrying, the mm -hmm. whatever's going on in your head, the ruminating mm -hmm. and accentuate at the same time, the physical sensation. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to do, what can I call this? A dragon breath. Mm -hmm. ah, I yeah. want you to really just it. blow it out at least two out of your mouth like you're breathing fire yeah and then with the next breath that comes in the yeah. next few which of course are gifts you don't know anything to deserve that they every one of those is a gift mm -hmm. as they come in think in terms of oxygenating all of those key points of tension and mm -hmm. discomfort mm -hmm. But I mean, you got to you got to take this seriously, son. Yeah. It's it's really completely possible mm -hmm. to feel at peace while you're solving all these problems. Mm -hmm. If and what I, you do is you decide, yeah, I'll feel at peace when I get my ducks in a row. Right. You're not going to get your ducks in a row. Look around you. Mm -hmm. Nobody does for any length of time. Mm -hmm. It ain't happening. Right. But that peace that you're after already exists within you, and that's mm -hmm. not just a cotton candy philosophy or a wispy platitude, it's in there. Mm -hmm. And what the method is about is starting to witness how you're getting in the way of it. Mm -hmm.
So, I mean, stuff happens, you know, and that causes a glitch and that's completely right. natural. Mm -hmm. But how deep that pain goes mm -hmm. or tension or discomfort, how deep it goes, completely up to you, mm -hmm. completely. Okay. And how long you hang on to it is completely up to you. Yeah. So my thing is I, I would like, other than survival, mm -hmm. for feeling at peace to be your number one priority. Mm -hmm. and I'm aware so, I'm sort of haranguing here, but I really want to get this across. No, there. I feel the passion and I, um, and I believe it that if I were to move into it, like it and it, amplify it and then to be present to that and the intensity of that, and then to do that exercise, it would absolutely clear. It would clear quite a bit. It will. Uh, one caution I want to mention to you, uh, Sonny, and really to everybody, don't rush to the part where you release it. Okay. Be sure you do the accentuation first. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first wrote Time in Your Gremlin, the term I used, I think then, and I've stuck with it, was the Zen theory of change, mm -hmm. which simply stated is this. Uh, really, uh, s simply, I free myself from all this stuff, not by trying to free myself. Mm -hmm won't work it's never worked for anybody mm -hmm. i free myself by simply noticing how not why mm -hmm. how i am imprisoning myself mm -hmm. in the very moment in which i am imprisoning myself that's the key mm -hmm. the difference between insight and simply noticing mm -hmm. simply noticing has to do with catching yourself in the act of yeah. and when you accentuate it there is a natural natural correction that starts to occur it's oh, the same system that you used to learn to walk wow. and talk you didn't know anything about kinesiology physiology anything else you noticed if you lean too far to the left you bumped your head mm -hmm. so you started straightening up it's the same with this you oh. catch yourself in the act of jabbing your own thumb in your own eye and you notice you're doing it as you're doing it mm -hmm. so right. enough to know well i tend to do that you got to do it Catch mm -hmm. yourself in the act of it, a natural correction starts to occur. Interesting. I just call it the art of graceful change, you know. Yeah, that's really, very so, affirming. You know, it's very empowering. It works. That's why I like it. Thank you. You're quite welcome, Sonny. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sonny. My pleasure. Yeah. And uh, incidentally, Allison, so what I did with you in, in brief was all we did is I took what you were doing and I accentuated it via having you really notice. I made it bigger. We shined a bright light on it. And then there was a correction that started to occur in your body. Hmm. And then we added to that by saying, okay, if you were going to bring that feeling back, how would you do it? It's all about honing your response ability. Your ability to respond to external stresses or thoughts that are weird. You know, so. So how do you, go sorry, ahead. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the questions we got from people were, well, of course, well, how do you introduce this with a client? I know you just did it and everyone on this call, or everyone on this today are pretty much are coaches, not maybe not everybody, but the work people who work with other people. Yeah. And so we know what you're going to ask and we're willing and we'll go there for for those of us who work with you know people who live and die in corporate america who you know oh, are know. so yeah. so how do you introduce something like this to those kind of suited mentally and physically people well number one if you don't want to use the gremlin metaphor don't i mean if you think that's a turn off to some people uh, I mean, I've over the years done so many workshops. Well, J well, some of you may know Jane Massingill. She's the director of the Gremlin Timing Institute. And she uh, used to ask me all the time, she would say, how come you don't talk more about gremlins? And I told her what I told you guys. It's not really about that. So what's most important is that you understand the process. It has to do, with, there's a lot to it, but in short, simply noticing accentuating the obvious and then eventually playing with options and then being in process which simply noticing playing with options being in process being in process just means simply noticing 
and playing with options over and over and over again. That's being in pro. You don't tame your gremlin once and for all. It's a moment to moment, breath to breath thing, but you can get really good at it. So to answer your question, the way you introduce it is first of all, you use the method in your own life to the point that you are completely confident that it works. Me saying it ain't gonna do it for you, but you use it in your life and you start saying, hell, this works. You're gonna wanna tell everybody. And then you're working with people in a corporate setting. You just start using it with them. That's it. You know, I mean, ideally, I would love it if you could say, and by the way, there's a guidebook called Taming Your Gremlin or a master class in Gremlin Taming. But the main thing is to, you won't take a client or a corporate executive you're working with, you won't take anybody deeper than you've been with this thing. You just won't, you can't. Mm -hmm. So practice and then use it. And don't, if, if what you mean, Allison, or, or what whoever asked the question means is, how do I introduce the gremlin metaphor, you know, or the gremlin, don't, don't sweat it. I mean, we, we, if it really works for you, which it will, you're not gonna have any problems saying, here's what I do. Oh, you know? yeah. so, so that's so, the key. Uh, I've got one question, then I want to open it up to the group. Um, there's an assumption, and this is going to seem like, I feel like a master of the obvious thing, but there's an assumption in gremlin taming that says I can get enough distance from myself to realize there's a gremlin there. Does that make sense? You know, so mm -hmm. I was telling you, or was starting to tell you that, that I've found a new gremlin this week. And what I'm realizing now is the reason I'd never seen this gremlin before is because I was too enmeshed with it. Right like on. I, That's, there wasn't a difference between me and it. Right on. That's where simply noticing comes in, Allison. That's the, that's the deal. That's why I have you accentuate it. So at the point you accentuate it, there's light between you and it, and you're in touch with the observer within, the natural you. Well, with practice, you start to direct your awareness to that, and that's where that peace rests, you know. And I'm no master of this process. I've just been, you know, playing with it for years, and well, you might gotten be. better and better at it, you know. You might, so. might be a master. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, so those are, so for, for clients, for, for coaches and clients where the coach can see the gremlin and the client, not so much mm -hmm. suggestions about yeah. that. Yeah. Here's how it appears to me. You're getting in your own way. And then you tell, them. here's how it appears to me. You can even say, let's think of a way to accentuate that. Or you can just accentuate it. Don't worry if it looks like a gremlin or doesn't. One thing, I was hesitant to get into this, but really you just have one gremlin. Because, hear me out. Your gremlin is not your negative thoughts. Your gremlin is not your traumatic past experiences. Your gremlin is not even the horror movies in your head. Your gremlin is that thing that part of you actually that really uses those things to eat your lunch to to squelch the vibrant soul within now, i get asked a lot where does it come from so i'm going to answer it i don't know and neither does anybody else but i have never met anybody that doesn't have that duality and it's a huge gift from my experience to be able to tame that thing on the spot you just have a lot more pleasurable moments. So there's one gremlin and your gremlin is not cute. Your gremlin is not the negative thoughts. It uses them, creates a horror movie, and then invites you in to watch the horror movie and then sits there with you while you watch it. This is basically uh, what Sonny was working with. It'll say, well, just, just keep noodling on this, keep watching this, and eventually you'll find peace it's a lie. There's a difference between constructive thinking and ruminating. And you, constructive thinking, man, 10 minutes of constructive thought is a lot. It's a lot. If you go longer than that, you're probably ruminating, going over the same stuff time and time again. Mm -hmm. so.
Mm -hmm. Anyway, any other questions okay. or let's, yeah, uh, let's if, go. Dana, what do we see in, in the uh, question on the chat box? And then anyone who wants to raise their hand can raise their hand virtually under using the participants button. Um, Jen asked a question. She said, can you talk more about how to remove yourself from all of the inner dialogue? Aside from noticing and breathing, are there other techniques? Well, simply noticing is the primary thing. Okay, and one of the options that I've given you so far is to to shine a bright light to accentuate how you're getting in your own way. And let's just there there are others, but let's stick with that because at the point you're doing that, you're in the process of sanding down and in some cases eliminating those things. So let's talk about those things for just a moment. Uh, I think of them as poisons. Because literally, you start feeling these things in your body, you're going to notice what they feel like. It's not pleasant. Uh, one would be, as I said, worry. Ruminating. You know, what, that's predicated on fear. And really what happens with the monster of the mind, your gremlin creates a horror movie. And then seduces you into watching it. And you're, you, you start living through that. So that's one thing you can accentuate. So that's one poison. You start noticing what it feels like to scare the hell out of yourself. It's a very distinct feeling. It's different than another poison I'm going to tell you about, which is, uh, maybe we can pick one. R regret is fine, really. I mean, if what happened is, you know, I stepped on your toe, Allison, or I stubbed my own toe, I'm going to regret that. It's a natural feeling. But if I start assaulting my own character about that or listening to my gremlin and it becomes klutz, what the hell's the matter with you? When are you going to shape up? You're always bumping into people. You hurt people all the time. What kind of a schmuck are you? You know, whatever. If it becomes an assault on my character, it becomes a feeling called guilt, which occurs right here. I don't know if you can see me, but right, right, right around your heart of hearts in that area and in your upper abdomen. Not a good feeling. It's a poison, but it's a different poison than fear and worry. You really start tuning into your body, you'll notice the difference. Another poison is simply, well, beating the hell out of yourself. Kind of goes with the guilt thing sometimes, you know, just, just basically telling yourself or your gremlin telling you, however you want to frame it, that you're just not quite up to snuff, you know. And people who do that a lot to themselves end up having in my experience, kind of a, not exactly, well, some people, I guess, get kyphosis, but there's a, there's a, it's like, it's like something's over you beating you up. So that feeling occurs a little bit higher here. It affects your breathing very definitely. Very definitely. Uh, another uh, is to take a beautiful feeling like anger which I, I, you know, it reddens faces, it changes relationships for the better a lot of times. But clinging to a resentment, clinging to that anger, is like acid in a container. It'll eat you up. So that's another poison to be aware of. So, I mean, we could go on. The, the, the granddaddy of them all is trapping yourself in a, a concept, a belief, an opinion about who you are. That's really, because uh, any, I'd rather you have a positive self-concept than a negative one, but any yeah. concept is self-limiting because you're not a concept, you know, so anyway, but to answer the, uh, what's the name of the, what's your name? Who asked the question? Well, anyway. Check, it was um, Jen. It's Jen? Mm -hmm. Hi, it's, it's Jen for August. Okay, well, Jan, uh, so the process is, if you just practice with the accentuating the obvious and simply noticing, it'll help a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you also, when you start getting pretty good at that one, you can just practice change for a change. You can real quickly go to the option of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, just basically saying I'm not going there. But I, I really, from training so hundreds of coaches and therapists over the years, people jump to that way too fast with their clients. 
you know, I mean, we enter this profession because we're, we're helpers. So if somebody expresses pain, we want to immediately pull them through it as opposed to accentuating how they're getting themselves in it. Mm -hmm. So that's another option. So uh, there's also, I mean, I, 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 positive visualization is a, a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly the work of Bernie Siegel and, you know, Norman Cousins, the Simontons, there's hard data to support where wellness and athletic performance are concerned. It really makes a difference, mm -hmm. but it's limited in my estimation. And it may be limited for me because I think it's limited. I don't know, but I'm telling <laughs> you, I think, I think positive visualization has to be coupled with your best butt kicking effort. But that's another thing. I mean, I, I've got so many examples from my, uh, like when Ali, Muhammad Ali, I, I was a fan of his name, Cassius Clay. And I can remember that first time in the ring when, after he fought Sonny Liston, and he's screaming, I am the greatest. I had never heard anything <laughs> like that with such conviction. It was like, whoa. And sure enough, <laughs> you know, or Babe Ruth, I guess it was 1932. You know, he supposed, everybody's heard the story. He signals to the flagpole in center field and uh, knocks a home run. A little kid comes up to him afterwards and says, Mr. Ruth, uh, how did you know you were gonna hit it out there? And take, basically take the risk on pointing at the flagpole. What if you had missed? And he said, I never gave it a thought. So anyway, I think those are good examples of positive stuff, it's a good idea. So those are some ideas, Jen, to play with, but I like the, uh, you know, simply noticing and accentuating the obvious, the best, because the change that comes from that seems to last longer. Yeah. It's not just a new decision. It's like your whole body learns, oh, I'm sitting here beating the hell out of myself or scaring myself. Yeah. Or Would you say, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Jen. I was just going to ask, the main concept I heard you share with that is just not to rush through the uh accentuating part that that's sort of a natural we want to rush to the oh i want to help them but just let them just like you did with sunny let them really go through it feel it in their body talk about it don't rush it before you get to the you, um, you got it thank you that's right that i really am pushing that with you all i told you i wanted you to have something really practical you could use so thank you it yeah, sure is yeah that's that's the key so it's not the only thing, you know, I mean, there's a lot more to the method and a lot more that you can do, but that's a powerful thing that produces change from the inside out. So would you mind going through, we've got a question around this, the, the steps, because you, you, you went through it for some people it's a little quick. Yeah. So can you articulate what the steps are? Well, I can there. So there actually, there's 16 key principles in the gremlin timing method, but the, and there's a lot more than skills than that. But the, the core, I call the art of graceful change. It's like a roadmap. Okay. It's like here, you use, when I train people, you use your own personality, your own style to do it. But here's how it works. You help that client really notice how they're getting in their own way in the moment they're getting in their own way. So simply notice, if you think of an outline, Roman numeral one is simply notice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. A part of that, I guess you could put it parenthetically, is accentuating the obvious. Okay. And the obvious being like how they're getting in their own way. Precisely. What it looks like, feels like. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you may have to do it several times, but i tell you, it, it's just, I, I'll give you an example in a minute. If, well, here, so, if, so I've got a couch right over there. If, Allison, if you were sitting on that couch and you said to me, but Rick, I want to be on this part of the couch. And I said, well, let me help you. And I came and I picked you up and I plopped you down over there. Your next words to me are probably going to be, well, what now? So my style would be, you're sitting over there. 
and you say, I want to be over there. I would say, so where are you now? You'd say, I'm here. And what is it you want to be over there? I say, well, say again, my butt's on this couch and I want to be on that couch. I have you accentuate that. Okay. I don't say, let me help you move. I just say, say it again. My butt's on this couch and I want to be on that guy. Huh? Okay. You leave the client at the impasse. I mean, I'm, I'm, fairly helpful. I'll offer a hand to help them get across. Okay. So simply noticing Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two that I don't want you to rush to. I really appreciate that. Uh, somebody accentuated that here is play with options, but I can't emphasize enough times play with options. Okay. Like, uh, Sonny, when you, you, Sonny, when you started work a while ago, you know, one of the terms you used, uh, which is a key for me and should be a key to everybody here is trying. Mm -hmm. I'm trying, I'm trying to get through this or whatever. Yeah. Trying. I mean, it's trying is lying in a way you either do it or you don't do it. So if what you notice is that you're straining at something, it's time to ask yourself basically, how can I exert effort? How can I play with an option here? Play. It's just like the simply and simply noticing and the play with play with options are very important. It's a gentle process. There's nothing forced about it. It's a gentle process. And the options we're playing with are options for what? Playing with options for changing how you're jabbing your own thumb in your own eye. You know, one option, of course, is just to give it up. The second option is to, ch I call it change for a change. Just think, well, instead of sitting around scaring the hell out of myself, I'm going to have a really positive visualization. It's just as easy, and either one is going to affect your future. The first, the, the, the positive stuff feels a lot better, so why not do that? They're both just make-believe. See what happens, you know. So simply notice really emphasize it and and play with options that's right then so one option is change for a change another option is uh what i just said we could call it positive visualization in the book i call it just imagine it okay just imagine it okay so that's a that's a whole other option to play with but don't rush to that part mm -hmm. okay you know? So we've got then just you'll develop your develop your own options and don't forget you've got an ally in this process. It's called your client. Yeah. So you got any ideas how we can accentuate this? What would really work for you? Like I had you teach Dana. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just made that up. Yeah. You can make up things. That's okay. the fun of it. So, so once so you what? understand the roadmap, you can start making up your own ways to facilitate it. You want them to come up with your own ways. So simply notice, play with options. Roman numeral three is be in process. And all that means is recognize you're not gonna tame your gremlin forever, once and for all. It comes with the territory of being alive, but you're gonna keep simply noticing and playing with options. And as you do that, you start to notice that that gremlin is completely inconsequential. This dates me, but it, it really is like a 45 record playing on 78 in the background. It's like, who needs it? You know? So you just keep, keep it's all, uh, it's interesting because uh, there's a woman named Linda Dutry who tra trained with me for many years and she, she's an artist. And she made some gremlin timing jewelry just and you know, for people to have reminders. And one of them said, simply notice. And one said, breathe, damn it, breathe. And uh, play with options was one. Accent the obvious, there were several. But the one my wife came up with, which I thought was the most brilliant was practice. Practice. You're gonna get good at whatever you practice. You practice jabbing your own thumb in your own eye giving yourself headaches, giving yourself stomach aches, colitis, whatever it happens to be, you're going to get great at it. 
you practice what we're talking about here, you're going to get good at it. But it's not easy. I guess I really want to emphasize that, Allison. Yeah. It, it, it's so simple the way, I mean, that was my objective was to make this very accessible, both here and both in my writing, very accessible. And so it's simple, but it's a cliche, but it really isn't easy. You really got to practice. Yeah. Yeah. One and, of the common questions we got around this was how do I tame my grim, my own gremlin really quickly on the fly while I'm coaching a client? And I'm like, well, I think the answer is practice, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it is. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, you're going to love it if you really practice, you know. So this is so so we're gonna need to start to wrap here, Rick. What, what kind of final words do you have for our our group together today? Make your number one priority, other than survival, I should say that, feeling at peace on the inside, number one. And anytime anything messes with that, as quickly as you can, get some light between you and how you're contributing to it. Again, stuff happens. Blaring horns come in many forms, and you're gonna tighten up and be miserable when something kicks you in the gut. But how long you hang on to that, as I said, and how deep that feeling goes, that's your part. Mm -hmm. And if you can remove that layer of how you're contributing to your own misery, it's amazing how the other stuff is just not quite so miserable. Yeah. So, there. Yeah, what I'm really appreciating about that, Rick, is just this idea that our natural state is peaceful. Right. Which is your whole objective of your thing you're doing here, which is so beautiful, Allison. I mean, really. Yeah. So I want to thank you very much for having me. I really mean it. Uh, I enjoyed myself. And thanks to all of you for coming, my goodness, mm -hmm. and listening to me sort of lecture at you. Uh, but thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate your interest. Thank you so much. So um, Rick's book, Mas The Masterclass in Gremlin Taming, is an amazing resource for all coaches. You can learn more about Rick if uh, you follow hashtags Taming Your Gremlin or Gremlin Taming. And Rick occasionally does intensives in this work. And if you're interested in that, you can um, go to support at, at tamingyourgremlin.com. Anything else you want to say, Rick? Well, I do want to mention that I don't publicize these intensives at all. And I really only take one or two people at a time. But anybody who's sincerely interested, just contact me through support at tamingyourgremlin.com. And, you know, we'll talk. And if we decide it's something that we want to pursue, uh, I mean, I'm old, so I don't, I only do things, work with folks I really want to work with. So, you know, we'll talk and see if you like me and I like you. And, and if you want to know more, we'll talk about how that might be arranged. And it's a pretty simple thing. So, okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So if you want to follow us and, and check out what we're doing, you can see us here. Um, Thank you.